What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to prove that a quadrilateral is a rhombus using coordinate geometry. So for this question here, let's start by plotting these points. We have A is down here at negative 1, negative 2. Then we have B is at 3, negative 5. So that's going to be down here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, heading here in the fourth quadrant. So there's point B. And then C is at 3, 0. And then D is at negative 1, 3. So that's up here. And we're going to do this in stages. The first thing we want to show is where we want to find the coordinates of E, the intersection of the diagonals. And what we'll do first is just sketch this thing out. So here's A, B, C, D. And we want to find the intersection point of the diagonals. One of the things you need to know about parallelograms is that the diagonals bisect each other, which means that they share the same midpoint. So if we really wanted to show all the work for part A, what we could do is find the midpoint of diagonal AC and the midpoint of diagonal DB and show that they're the same. So we'll start with AC. So diagonal AC, that's these, we're going to use these two points here. We're finding the midpoint, so we're going to add the x-coordinates. We have negative 1 plus 3, and we're dividing by 2. And then we're going to add the y-coordinates, negative 2 plus 0, and we're going to divide that by 2 as well. And when we simplify this, the midpoint of diagonal AC is going to be 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then we get negative 2 over 2 is negative 1, which is supported by the picture here. You see 1, negative 1 is at point E, so, so far so good. And now the next diagonal is DB, so we'll find the midpoint using points B and D. Now we've got 3 plus negative 1, and we're dividing by 2, comma, and then we have negative 5 plus 3 divided by 2. So now we just simplify this here, and notice 2 divided by 2 from the first section here is giving us 1, and then we have negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So see, the coordinate matches. So to answer part A, the coordinates of E, the point of intersection of the diagonals, is at 1, negative 1. So now for the next part here, we want to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. But we just did all of the work in part A that we need to prove that this is a parallelogram because in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. So since the diagonals share the same midpoint, that means that the diagonals bisect each other. And once again, if you have a quadrilateral where the diagonals bisect each other, that means the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so this finishes up part B, but remember, the million-dollar phrase here is that you have to establish that since the diagonals share the same midpoint, the diagonals bisect each other, and then you could write your conclusion. Uh, and just know that this symbol here, the three dots, means therefore. If you've never seen that before, it's just a nice abbreviation that shows up all the time in math. So now, part C, what we want to do is we want to prove that the diagonals are perpendicular. So for part C, to show that the diagonals are perpendicular, we need to analyze the slope of AC and DB. So we'll start with AC. So the slope of segment AC is going to be equal to, we're finding the difference of the Y value. So we have negative 2 minus 0 divided by, and then we have the difference of the X values. We have negative 1 minus 3. And when we simplify this, we have negative 2 over negative 4, which gives us positive 1 half. And then the slope of the other diagonal, DB, we could get using the slope formula. So we have the difference of the y value. So we have negative 5 minus 3 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have 3 minus negative 1, which is the difference of the x values. And then we have negative 8 over positive 4, which simplifies to negative 2. But just know, when you're trying to show that two lines are perpendicular, you need to show that their slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other. And if you notice here, 1 half and negative 2 are opposite reciprocals because to go from 1 half to negative 2, I flip this fraction and then change the sign from positive to negative. So this shows that the lines are perpendicular. So now we have enough information here to answer the last part. And for the last part, we want to prove that ABCD is a rhombus. Well, think about what we just showed. We showed that the diagonals of this parallelogram are also perpendicular. And just know we have a very helpful theorem that says that in a parallelogram, if the diagonals are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is also a rhombus.
So I really like this question because we're showing that this quadrilateral is a rhombus using just the diagonals. But if instead the question said just prove that this is a rhombus using any method you want, and there was only one part to this, what I would wind up doing is just show that the side lengths of all four sides are exactly the same. And if we just count the vertical side, see the units, we just count one, two, three, four, five. The length of all four sides is going to be five units. So if I had to do this a separate way, just showing that this is a rhombus, you could also say that since all sides are equal in measure, all four sides are congruent. So therefore, ABCD is a rhombus because it's a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. But this question took us through a step-by-step -step approach using the diagonals. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on proving that a quadrilateral is a rhombus. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.